but in this 60 minute session, um, you will discover um, why data analytics uh, will be expected uh, in almost every role, um, the skills applicable to every role, not just data analytics roles and how that's gonna grow over the next two years. Why making the transition into data analytics can be achieved at any stage of career and hearing directly from some of the people that have done it, how they made that transition, made that change and, and what their experience was. And so now I get to introduce our panelists that we will be hearing from today. And so um, I think they're gonna turn on their screens um, and uh, as I introduce them, but um, first of all, Elodie Hudson, uh, data scientist at Assess Tech. Uh, Ash Johnson, lead data engineer at CityWire. Hussein Farouk, economic consultant, senior manager at Grant Thornton. Tandra Roy, uh, analytics enablement learning lead at the Bank of England. And Mark Stevenson, uh, head of data science at Hook. Um, an amazing group of uh, data analytics professionals that have uh, all made the transition at various points and, and now at various stages of their data careers um, and huge appreciation to all of them for giving up their time this lunchtime um, to have a, a great discussion around data analytics. Uh, thank you very much to you all. Um, so a couple of practicalities. The session is going to be an hour, um, so we will finish on the hour. Going to whistle through as much as possible. Um, and please do stay with us till the end to find out how you can get exclusive access to free workshops and some extra benefits uh, from Fourth Rev and the London School of Economics. Um, there is a Q&A function if you have questions. Um, so please use that Q&A function. Um, we will be holding questions until the end because we've got a lot to get through already. And if we've got time, we'll get through to some of the uh, most popular questions. Otherwise, we will uh, endeavor to answer those and share them with uh, some of the correspondents we will follow up the session with. Um, Otherwise, um, yeah, please use the chat function to to share remarks, engage, um, and uh, yeah, let's have a have a wonderful hour. Um, I think lastly to add at the end of the session, um, one of my colleagues from from Fourth Rev will also be um, here and available to answer questions around some of the more practical things around around Fourth Rev and LSE programs for those that are particularly interested. So um, we asked people uh, as they were signing up why they were attending today's session. And these are some of the themes that came through. People that are hungry for growth around their professional and, and personal lives, curious about making changes uh, in particular into data analytics and, and broader digital fields. They're committed to investing in themselves, continuing to upskill in order to stay ahead of, of the myriad of changes we're seeing across business um, and the wider technology landscape. And they're really eager to understand um, what some of the opportunities out there are and how they might be able to, to capitalize on them. So many things that we're going to try and cover in today's session. Beginning with uh, this quote, um, data and analytics literacy must become an expectation across all curricula, regardless of the ultimate field or degree pursued. This quote from um, the former talent and skills strategist at IPM, IBM, uh, Stephen Miller. Um, particularly interesting because we will talk about very specific data roles and the data career today, but also just highlighting how ubiquitous data has become across all professional fields and how valuable those sort of data skills are um, for everyone furthering their career regardless of, of role. And so looking at the data roles specifically, we're seeing that data analyst is forecast to be one of the fastest growing jobs over the next five years with 32% growth expected just in 2023 alone, um, which means just in the UK alone, um, over 200,000 roles. And we know we do have a global audience here uh, and, and uh, the university and Fort Thrift serve a, a global audience, but that UK 200,000 alone, and that is you know, reflective across all economies uh, and industries where data is just such a fast growing career um, path and, and opportunity. Um, and the top five roles that organizations are currently hiring for in data specifically is that data analyst role, uh, often the entry point for people into data, um, but also data, data managers, CTO, data protection officers being other roles that are very, very prominent. And most interestingly, as you see there, that stat that 46% of businesses report that they struggle to recruit 
roles that require data skills. There is a huge mismatch of supply and demand, which highlights what a tremendous opportunity data is for those that acquire the skills and experience in order to take advantage of it. And that quote is very much reflective of the conversations that I have on a daily basis with businesses around what are their greatest needs to enable their growth moving, moving forward. And so why are they in such high demand? Again, we're highlighting that environments everywhere across all businesses, all roles are becoming increasingly rich data environments, but it's hugely unstructured. 80% of data is unstructured. And so the role of the data analyst and data scientist to actually turn that data into genuine business value is where that massive business need is and that massive career opportunity sits. So now to uh, stop listening to me for a moment and bring in our first panelist, um, Hussein, a quote from you uh, that you shared with us earlier on, on the screen there, um, talking about how uh, data becoming an increasing part of every day-to-day -day role. And, and most uh, interestingly, I think that your sense that early adopters have got the biggest opportunity here. So I'd love you to expand on that a little bit for me. Sure. Thanks, Jack. So I think um, one of the things I'm beginning to I think appreciate having um, studied uh, the data analyst course at LSE is um, it's a it's a new language. Effectively, I think um, you don't need to look very hard to realise that every industry it's not any industry in particular, but all of them are beginning to capture a whole array of data, be it on kind of customer preferences, interest, types of products, how well utilised those are. And I think what I'm beginning to realise in my specific uh, field as an economist is if you're able to make sense of that data, and it's infinite, I think, um, you begin to stand out. You begin to distinguish yourself as, you know, as someone who's got a new way of considering or applying um, their own particular skill set. And I think um, it's remarkable, given how I think cost efficient it is nowadays to begin to capture data, that more people aren't jumping on the bandwagon. Um, and I think there's definitely as you've already mentioned, kind of um, a growing movement towards this becoming a integral part of your curriculum. I think going forward, you said you're a, a, a new father. I imagine your, your child going forward will have to, you know, um, instill in themselves kind of uh, an appreciation of data analysis because it's just, it's everywhere. Yeah, really interesting. And so if you're saying you're one of the um, people on the panel that doesn't have data sort of specifically in your job title, um, yeah. but really highlighting there just how central it is to, to your role and differentiating in your role. Uh, I think you're right. So it isn't a core part of my role, but I realise actually having the skill set stands out. Um, so being able to use economic theory in conjunction with an appreciation of data manipulation or scraping or kind of diagnostic techniques really help me kind of um, move myself up kind of the career path. Yeah, fascinating. Thanks very much, Hussein. Um, I think on a on a um, on a similar theme, um, Mark would love to to, to bring you in here um, around that early adopter theme. Again, this sense that although data is already such a huge role and, and so part of popular conversation around business the sense that we're still very much at day one I'd love to understand a bit more around what you're what you're getting at there yeah hello everyone so I've spent basically most of my last six years in databases and building models and spending my nine to five looking at data and I can't tell you the amount of times it's been oh we don't collect that data or it'd be great if we could measure that or it'd be great if we could model that actually I think if you look at despite all the data analysts data scientists machine learning engineers roles in in business and indeed the world um, we're still at the really early stages. There's a lot more data to collect and there's a lot more mining of that data. And most of the world's data is still not mined and, and analyzed, which is exactly what businesses are realizing, which is why the demand for data analysts are, are growing. I think um, we can all see that um, in our personal lives. Like five or six years ago, uh, Fitbits and Apple Watches weren't really a thing. And now we're all able to collect data from wearables. Um, it's exactly the same in business. It's exactly the same in, in every single industry. But um, there's that fact, which I always lose track of. Is it 90% of the world's data has been created in the last two years? It's, it's, it's something like that. Um, and because of that, there's still a lot of work for those of us in the industry to properly analyze that and, and make better and informed decisions. Um, I feel quite fortunate being in the industry because I think the next decades and decades ahead, the demand for our skill sets is only going to, to grow as we progress from the very early stages to the potential for data. Um 
yeah, couldn't couldn't agree more. It's it's one of those um, incredibly future proofed careers. Uh, it seems right now as as that demand just grows and grows. Um, Tandra, if I could bring you in here um, as, as as an experienced professional, um, you know, within the Bank of England, would love to to get your sense on on that theme around how data be- becoming more prominent uh, in in business and 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 perhaps a bit of insight through your experience um, at at the bank uh, on on that theme. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jack. Um, uh, it's lovely to be here, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, I could not agree more with the comments that has been made. So I um, am one of the recent career changes, actually. But uh, one thing that I have felt is that I have had a like a, over 15 years of um, oil and gas career before moving into so-called data analytics. But what I realized is that even though we have been using the term now, a lot of us are, we're already doing data analytics day in and day out as part of our job without giving it a title that we are data analysts. So I think um, understanding that um, helped me, like I have made a complete paradigm shift in my um, job role is uh, coming from oil and gas to the central banking. And when I have joined the central banking, uh, what I saw is that, um, you know, when it comes to actually as you are saying that there are lots of unstructured data in there. And then the fact that um, we can bring in those data, especially important for um, an organization like a central bank where you know, they are responsible for policy making. The more it is backed by data, the better uh, sound foundation they have. So there is a huge need um, of um, data analysts and data scientists. And we we have a, like a huge repository of data that um, we need to go through and um, we are constantly analyzing there. So we, we see it firsthand how it affects actually people, you know, the how, how analyzing the data and making sense of it and how that is affecting the policy makings and um, how that is actually affecting people. So in my mind is that I think um, we shouldn't consider data analytics to be a separate career. I think it is a part, a skill that almost all of us at some point have had or have done. We just have to understand that transferable skill and we just need to um, know the tools um, that will help us uh, stay in this path for a longer time because in whatever industry we are working in, we will be doing some sort of analytics some way or other. Um, yeah, couldn't agree more there, Tandra. I think the just as you were speaking, I was just reflecting on the number of meetings I've been in this week where you've got uh, you know debates that people are having around particular decisions, and someone asking, well, what does the what does the data say on on that one? And everyone in in every role being expected to. Um, yeah, have that data-driven mindset to be able to gather that that data and, and interpret it and articulate those business decisions on on that basis. Um, really, really interesting. Um, okay, so come back to um, what some of the opportunities are in data analytics. I mean, we've heard already from from people in uh, economic consultancy. Um, I know that we've got other panelists in 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 real tech-driven uh, businesses. Um, also in the banking and, and finance sector, um, but as you can see that there are, are a myriad of roles across almost every industry and in fact every industry that you, you can think of. And so that opportunity to combine data with the, the areas or the verticals that you're passionate about or have previous experience in, um, we see as, as a great opportunity that people, people really do take advantage of as they transition into data. I mean, a couple of the, I think, you know, examples, um, Netflix being, you know, one of the, the very well-known examples around how, you know, the TV or uh, uh, viewing experience has, has transitioned from being one of, you know, five channels on terrestrial here in the UK to being a truly data-driven experience. And that quote from their director of global communications that there are 33 million different versions of Netflix because of that huge team of data scientists and data analysts that sit um, behind the scenes at Netflix interpreting the data based on their overall uh, consumption of of their, their services on their platform and the individual choices in order to provide that personal Netflix experience to each individual as they they log on and their recommendation engine being seen as the the really critical differentiator in their success, which is of course all all built upon their control um, and and command of of the data that they generate. 
closer to home. Um, perhaps slightly less uh, glamorous, but um, really interesting examples in 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 the retail sector, uh, Tesco's, um, and and this being you know examples that you hear across other uh, companies such as 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 Amazon and others as well, but analyzing really interesting things like weather behavior um, or uh, looking at, at, at the behavior of, of buying habits of people in particular regions so that they can forecast exactly what purchases they can expect in particular regions in particular areas and then get ahead of making sure that the right stock is there not too much not too little driving huge efficiencies across their their business models as well so lots of very very interesting applications uh, in all sorts of roles in all sorts of different industries um, and so Tandri, um coming back to you here with with this this quote and um so as you said sort of recently transitioning from your prior career in, in oil and gas into a data role at the bank. Um, really interested to see your, 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 or hear a bit more on your experience of, of training to become a data analyst and how that, that opened up employability options for you and, and how you see that for others at the bank as well. Right, thank you. So um, as I said that, you know, uh, when I was um, looking to change, um, the option for data science it came quite organically to me uh, because um, I used to work as a seismic um, data processor um, and that that was uh, my designation initially uh, so we have we went through gigabytes of data terabytes of data and processed it um, and then interpreted it in oil and gas domain so when I thought about it, the concept or the fundamentals of data science is, is that is exactly what it is. You have data, you process it, and then you interpret it. And then you tell your story, you find the solution from your data. And when your, um, when your uh, decision is backed by data, and I think uh, for all of us who have done um, data science courses have seen more than one example of how uh, when your decision is backed by data um, can influence uh, in a positive direction and how it can even completely change your direction, um, you know, uh, the way you want to run your organization when you actually analyze the data. Sometimes um, a lot of gut feelings work, but then data might uh, tell you a different story. So if you understand how to analyze data, uh, then um, you know um, you can pretty much go run go into walk into any industry I think um, and then if there is a data if you know what is a trend and if you know the basic statistics is like you know like mean median mode if you if you understand that then um, interpreting data becomes much easier and that means that you're not restricted to one particular industry that belongs to your own domain you you are open to any domain you can go into any uh, industry and the more industry you work in you know i think your employability becomes more and more because you are more agile and then you are more flexible and you can fit in anywhere and then you have this wealth of knowledge from different industries so i think it's a it's a fantastic career that um uh, you should not be. And one thing I always get from people who thinking about it is that um, they often contemplate that I'm not a programmer. Is this for me? And I want to say that um, please don't let that stop you if you are not a programmer uh, by education from the beginning. Um, that um, does not stop. I have I, ha I have seen people who are um, not programmers. I myself were not a programmer, but um, it's still you can still do it. Yeah, fantastic. I think it's a, a great point. And we're, we're going to get into some of the, the technical skills that people um, are looking for or employers are looking for later on. But there are pathways and, and a multitude of pathways from from different backgrounds. Um, perhaps uh, that'd be a great point to bring bring you in here, Ash. Um, I know you're, a, I think, uh, about a year in now um, to to your your role at, at CityWire, but would love to hear a bit more about your um, sort of experience um, setting up and then and then making that transition into CityWire. Yeah, sure. So um, so I effectively ran my own company for almost twenty years, uh, and I used to be we used to be in, the, be in fashion and uh, work in retail. When I made the transition, I kind of knew I wanted to move into the data world. 
Um, so I actually, um, funny enough, I did the LSE course um, almost a year and a half ago now. Um, and, and very early on, I, I, I kind of moved, I pivoted more towards the engineering side. So for, for those of you that don't know what um, data engineers do, we essentially create the pipelines and the scaffoldings that the analysts can use. Um, so at my, my role, I've recently been promoted to lead. And one of my main roles is sort of governance of the data and also making sure that all our siloed bits of information all get into our data warehouse so that the analysts can use it. So at CityWire, we um, sort of hold one of the largest um, uh, databases of fund managers and fund manager performance. It's, it's very, very difficult to get all of that information in one place. So there needs to be proper pipe work at, at the back end that, that we, we, we do it. Um, on a side note, um, I really like machine learning. So it's one of the things that I've been sort of doing at CityWire. And although it's not traditionally a part of, I'd say, a data engineer, um, I have successfully deployed uh, a few machine learning um, sort of pipelines within the company. And I think it's, it's, it's all about looking at the landscape of data. And there's so many sort of fragmented smaller roles like you could go into ml ops you could get into uh ml engineering they, they, it really depends on what you like um in terms of where you see your career progressing or what you think you're really good at so again and to uh, repeat what um tantra said is you don't have to be programmatic uh, or, or know how to code in python but there are certain prerequisites like sql is one of them I think there is a slide that's going to come up where I said SQL is the one thing you need to know because you will not be using Excel um, as much because you, you're you querying massive databases. Um, and like when you use things like BigQuery or Snowflake, you really need to know some of the tools and, and what you're actually doing with it. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more there. Ash, I think that there are there are certain prerequisite technical skills that um, yeah they're, they're they're necessary to get to um, to the interview stage. But I think really importantly, um, number of those skills you know they 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 don't take years of of programming um, experience or practice. That there's there's a number of those skills that can be picked up in in a surprisingly short period of time with the right application. Um, based on on a lot of the the sound foundations that people would have picked up through their their schooling and and various different um, experiences through through study and and work. Um, thanks very much. Um, so we've got a variety of of career changes on on the call, um, and um, not all of them have have done the the LSE program, um, but a couple have already shared that that they have, um, and and wonderful to hear that the success that they've been having on the back of of that. But um, I think this these stats that are sharing on the screen here are really interesting to show that. Um, the breakdown in age of data analysts, um, a strong majority uh, uh, um, uh, that 40 plus years sort of working professional. And when we think about career changes and career changes into high growth fields, it's absolutely critical where we're seeing these huge transitions in the economy for people to upskill, reskill and make those transitions. But it's obviously very intimidating often to make that transition and can be more so as you progress further along in your career and you've developed um, or progressed further along perhaps and you're feeling like you might be starting again by making that transition um but actually um i think from our experience that 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 fear is is not always um the complete picture or already well placed and actually there's there's huge benefits to making that change at various stages of of the career and so um uh, Elodie, I'd, I'd love to bring bring you in here, where you have um, you've self classified yourself as a, a later stage um, career changer, um, and would love to hear that you know a bit more about your background prior to to starting as a data scientist and some of the benefits that you know you're you're experiencing and, and skills that you're able to leverage into both securing the role, um, but but also now now you've got started, and I appreciate you've got started pretty recently. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Yeah, I started my role as a, da a data scientist yesterday. So this is day two. Thank you. Um, I've learned a lot already. Um, I've come from 16 years as a teacher. Um, I'm 51 now. And before my teaching career, I worked in fishery science. And actually, what I realized when I um, made that transition was that a lot of the work I did in science was hugely relevant to what I've learned recently. Um, and what I knew as modeling is now called machine learning. So my background really helped me make that transition. But 
when you've been in teaching for as long as I have, it really is extremely daunting to consider doing something completely different. Uh, so I really felt I'd have to start from scratch. And one of the hard things, as it says in this quote, is knowing at, at which level you're going to enter an organization and what the right sort of organization is going to be. Because graduate schemes are just really not suitable for someone like me. I've got too much experience. Um, my salary expectations are too high for a graduate role. Um, so that was hard to work out. And the career coaching I had on the LSE course really, really helped with that. And basically what I've discovered is I, I had a lot more transferable skills than I thought I did. And they didn't all come from my science backgrounds. A lot of them have come from the teaching itself. Um, and in terms of organization, I did a lot of work into sort of identifying where I would like to be. And the company I work for, Assessitech, is a small uh, software company of 30 people. And that's perfect for someone like me because I'm going to be able to make use of my leadership and uh, teamwork skills um, straight away. And I'll have the opportunity to sort of get involved in lots of different aspects of the business. Um, and obviously, the one thing I don't bring to this role is subject matter expertise, but that's what I'm learning now. Um, and I've got the skills to do that quite quickly. So it's very, very exciting. And so I'd say to anyone my age or anyone who feels that it's too late, it's just not. Um, it's a long time before I'm going to be retiring. Um, and I felt, you know, 16 years to retirement, theoretically. I've done 16 years in education, which has been fantastic. So more than enough time for a whole new career. Um, yeah, I think very eloquently said there, um, Aladine, congratulations again on starting the new role. Um, really sounds fantastic. Um, and yes, that lifelong journey, um, that previous idea that we sort of, you know, people finished school or, or graduated from university and sort of stepped onto the career ladder and stayed on that through to retirement is very much a, a sort of outdated um, experience for for the vast vast majority um, of us these days I think and that that the length of careers now and the fast pace of change that we're seeing across all industry and roles means that yeah those multiple careers um, upskilling reskilling as you go um, very much becomes the the norm um, but fantastic to um, yeah see see people like yourself um, leading the charge there so congratulations once again um, saw some you. nodding heads as Elodie was was telling that story I didn't know if anyone else wanted to um, you know, share some of the, the the experiences or skills that they've been able to bring from from other roles uh, into 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 data or or to combine with data to um you know further um further build out their strengths in 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 their current roles um ash can i can i go to you there yes um so ironically enough i did i did an economics degree before i got into fashion and i never thought i would use that skill set again obviously you realize you're using it without you actually sort of consciously using it but it's like what Elodie said it's like machine learning is just statistics and that's just put in a programmatic way and it's the new way of us being able to do very complex modeling which would have taken which would have not been possible like you know we can do things in two dimensions and three dimensions when you move to like an n-dimensional vector how do you visualize that and that's where sort of like machine learning comes in and I think the, the, the beauty is with with things like Hugging Face and there, there's so many new platforms, it is really democratizing the use of very complex systems with people, but it is very much an academic field. So I think the one thing you do need is a thirst for knowledge and a thing to say, I haven't reached and you constantly need to be reading papers and, and new developments within the field because it is it is progressing at a rapid rate so I, I would say like that is the one one sort of skill set that that I really enjoy is being very research oriented um yeah I think that that growth mentality uh to a lot of fast changing tech roles in particular but that thirst to uh keep keep learning to keep uh experiencing new challenges so critical to these roles where um yes the the demands and needs are changing on a on a such a regular basis um mark i was wondering if if um you'd be able to share any uh any insights from your experience appreciate um that you've been in in a couple of different roles before um your your role now at, at hook and would would love you to share a bit more about that with the audience yeah so i, I was a management my first job out of university was a management consultant um 
And I think certainly a skill set I picked up there, which is very transferable, and I know we're going to touch on this later on, is, is bridging the gap between those doing data analytics and data science and data analysis and kind of who's consuming it. Um, it's very easy to get siloed into speaking quite technically about an output or a model or analytics that uh, if you're not careful, will just go over the heads of the people you're, you're speaking to. And actually the importance of those communication skills, uh, problem solving skills, understanding what your analytics can do to help the business is, is, is really, really useful. So kind of the, the step before doing the analysis and the step doing after doing the analysis. Um, I think you know, my background in, in management consultant and maybe just some management consultants listening today um, was was really, really helpful. Um, yeah, brilliant. I mean, we speak to a lot of companies as well that employ a lot of management consultants and they they talk about the, the real need to upskill all of their management consultants in data as well. So I think it's in, it can, yeah, that sort of two-way street, bringing those skills into data roles, but also data into those consultant roles, because as you say, those silos don't exist from a customer perspective. They want to know what the analysis is. They want it communicated clearly and the impact it can have for their for their business. Um, wonderful. Thank you. Um, so talking to some of these career paths, um, I think we've got a sort of a pretty um, uh, simplified view, um, although a bit of, bit of detail on the page, uh, which you'll be able to read more clearly when we send this, this, this recording and the pack through uh, following the session. But um, just sort of mapping out some of those you know, very uh, typical data career paths where obviously the starting point is typically getting the, the, the skills, um, ideally the experience, the portfolio, um, and, and the preparation to land that first job, which can very often be as a as a junior data analyst. Um, but then three sort of very common roles within the data or pathways within the data field itself we see is that progression um, either as a data analyst continuing to, to continue down that, that technical path, moving into a more specialist role. So combining that with that deep vertical uh, or industry expertise um, with, with the data skill set underpinning it, or further upskilling to go from that data analyst skill set to becoming a, a data scientist. Um, and then Ash has also shared the, the data engineering route that, that he's um, followed down as well, um, which is a an area of huge growing demand from, from industry as, as well. And so, again, some of the roles there where people starting as, as data analysts at that, that entry level, but then moving across into these, these different roles too. Hussain, coming, coming back to you, I mean, I think that one of the big questions we know that that people have when they're thinking about making the change is when to make the change and how to make the change. How do I even get started? Um, so we'd love love a bit of insight from your experience on on you know when when did you decide? How did you decide that you know I needed to get get some data skills to to make the next step in your career? Sure. So in my case, I've spent about um, ten to eleven years in the government economic service, so the UK civil service. Um, applying a fairly specific skill set to a range of different policy matters, but looking kind of forwards, I thought I wanted to do something different. Um, I think I had looked at online courses before. In my case, I think I found the LSE course really useful because I had to sign up something and it was quite systematic and do it on a regular basis. But I found in general, actually, the common thread amongst a lot of people who sort of followed a similar path is just they just took up. Um, something outside of their day-to-day -day and pursued it. I think, you know, picking up on what Ash said, if you've got an interest or a, a yearning to kind of just invest in yourself, you'll find the payoff almost immediate. Um, it, it's such an, a vast kind of skill set. You can apply it to a range of different careers and industries. And I just found that actually taking the time one day to think about what I like doing and it basically telling a story and how can I refine my ability to tell that story by investing in a language kind of really helped map out my career path. Yeah, really, really interesting. Thank you. Um, Mark, I think similar sentiment sort of shared here as well. I'd love you to, to expand on. Yeah, I, I feel quite passionately about, about this one. That kind of if, you, if you want to move into data and analytics, um, the, the best way is just to, to start. I think a few of the panelists have touched on it that there's such a wide array of roles now available. Like if you're if you're listening today and thinking, well, maybe I don't want to program too much. Uh, I entirely agree with what Tam just said. Like there's lots of roles where you don't need lots of programming. You could be a data product manager. 
equally, if you want um, to program a lot, you can be a machine learning engineer. But I think the only way you uncover that is just by starting, by throwing yourself in, doing something outside of your day to day. And um, I think there's three main benefits from, from just starting. Um, one, it's a signal to potential um, employers that, um, look, you've got a genuine interest in this. Um, I must have interviewed hundreds and hundreds of data scientists. And I think uh, having a portfolio, having an online presence is probably moving from a nice to have to a bit of a necessity. Um, and it, it is noticeable people who, 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 who have that. Um, secondly, you just learn a lot. You will, through the act of doing, you will learn a lot, um, especially around the technical schools. And then third, you'll learn a lot about what it is you want to do in data analytics. If it kind of seems this big field and you don't know where to get started, I would say just 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 try. You know, if you're interested in tennis, analyze some tennis matches. If you want to blog about the impact of AI on ethics, blog about the impact of AI on ethics. Um, the field is so broad, um, you'll be able to find your niche. And by just starting, you'll find your niche. Yeah, really, really interesting. Uh, one thing that you you touched on there was um, yeah the the increasingly critical importance of a portfolio. Um, you know, for 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 those uh, listening uh, in the audience that that might not have that much insight into into a portfolio in a job process, would you be able to expand on that a little bit for us? Yeah. Um, so the portfolio is just to demonstrate your skill set, your interests, and to to prove you've got a, a track record. Really. Um, a lot of data science CVs, I would say, would have some sort of portfolio. And, and for example, that could be some projects. That could be your GitHub website, which is where a lot of code is hosted. It could be contributing to like uh, familiar open source packages. It could be blogging about it. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the specifics are, but it's a way for for myself and others interviewers to to ascertain. Okay, this is this is your skill set, and also that it's a genuine interest in the field, and that you're looking to to grow, and you've got a hunger for growth and passion, and perhaps you can bring something um, different, a different perspective, because you're transitioning into data analytics and the people that have been from the very start. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Um, and. So we sort of work across across different fields, not just data, and we've seen the growing importance of portfolios in in sort of every role. Um, as 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 employers look to have more sort of evidence that goes beyond sort of performance in an interview, how well someone can respond to to questions, but actually that sort of demonstrable proof of not just skill sets, but that clear passion and interest where uh, a company wants to invest in an individual that's going to keep investing in themselves and and be with the company. Uh, growing over the the longer term, and the portfolio can can really go a long way to demonstrating that. Um, we we think. Um, thanks very much, Mark. Um, so coming through, we've we've already touched on on a number of the um, the, the the transferable skills. Um, so I won't stay too too long on this slide and and the interests of of time. But um, yeah, I think uh, so so critical and such a huge value add for career changes into into these different data roles. Um, and just a, a, a quick snapshot, a number of the things that, that have been sort of called out. But um, when people are reflecting, I think, upon their, their own background, their own experience, what, what skills do I have that are relevant to a data analytics career? Well, actually, yeah, people are looking for, for individuals that can create huge business value within their organization and, and people that have been successful professionals in, in different fields, um, bringing that into the organization, I think, yeah, can think really clearly about where they've been successful before and, and, and how they can add value in, in a different setting, a different context, and, and really clearly understand that employers think that way as well. Um, so what skills do, do, do we see setting people up for career success? So at Fourth Rev, as we collaborate with, with universities, um, such as the LSE, around these high growth digital fields. And, and we bring, um, we call this this future fit framework, which is looking at the technical skills. Um, so as we approach the design of a program, what working with the, the faculty experts at the university, as well as industry experts, employers, what are the critical technical skills that are simply prerequisites for getting into this field and, and making sure that they're part of the curriculum. But then also, how do people take those technical skills and apply them in a business context to create genuine value, moving it from an academic to a applied exercise, which is so, so important. What are the employability skills as we're supporting people at various stages of their career? How are we uh, building upon 
a number of these skills that they already have, perhaps just emphasizing or articulating them more successfully, as well as developing them further within the program, um, which sets them up for that job success, as well as you know, not just getting that job, but being successful and accelerating once in the role. And then lastly, really critically important to, to, to us and to the career accelerated programs, and, and, and we see as a, a consistent theme for individuals that are successful throughout their careers, that knowledge and skills around personal growth and development, which, which really allows people to understand where they're at, where they want to get to, how they set those goals, how they set themselves up for that, that growth and that success. So we're going to get into a bit more detail around what comes under, under each of these categories for, for data analytics in particular. And so five top skills that employers tell us in the biggest gap between the importance that, that, that they have for performance and lacking in, in candidates or, or employees is information management, communication, data communication skills, knowledge of emerging technologies and solutions and data literacy and obviously that sort of communication data literacy some of these fundamentals um coming through very very clearly there data visualization another area that's hugely grown um want to call out we build our, our programs with 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 industry partners including that such as as tableau real experts in here because of the importance of, of such skills but now getting into these four categories, so technical skills, um, we've got a summary here, but I'd love to jump to, to, to Tandra here around, you know, your view on what technical skills have been most important for you in, in landing and, and um, continuing your career now in, in data. Yes, um, so um, when I was researching, obviously, um, I do not come from a programming background. Um, however, I want to reiterate one of the things that Mark said um, about um, it is very soon it is going to be not necessarily, uh, you know, a skill that you may have, but a skill that you need to have. So what I mean by that is 20 years ago, uh, if somebody knew uh, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint or Excel, that would have been considered um, like, you know, something that you would highlight in your CV. Today, um, you wouldn't probably even write that I know how to uh, do a presentation in PowerPoint. That is where this world is going towards. So it is no longer, I keep telling everybody uh, whom I, um, I teach at the bank is that um, one, like sooner or later, you have got to come into this field. So the sooner the better. The reason being is that um, the world is producing so much of data and, and everybody is understanding the power of data. So what I have found is that um, Python as a language, um, I found it much very easy to learn. I, I researched uh, amongst different um, languages and I have to say that my decision on learning Python was um, you know, heavily influenced by uh, market analysis, um, you know, Kaggle service and stuff like that is obviously Python is the, the, um, the biggest, the fastest growing language. And I wanted to know why. And when I started learning, I found that um, it's not um, that scary, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely was, uh, um, uh, you know, not, it was not easy. It was very intimidating to begin with, uh, to, to learn a different language. But again, it is just another language. So if you consider it like, you know, like you're, you want to learn French or German, it is just another language. If you learn the grammar and the alphabets, um, you don't have to remember the syntaxes. Uh, they are all there online in Google, and that's how everybody operates. They are all everybody is doing Google searches. All you have to understand is the the fundamentals of it and um, the alphabet and the grammar, and then off you go. The more you practice, the better you get. That's really um, there is all to it. And um, learning Python uh, gives you um, an edge to. Um, over other languages because simply because it is the fastest growing, it has this uh, very wide application. It is not like, you know, it's a general purpose language, which means that it can be used in various domains. In, in, in It has such a strong suite of functions and libraries. So, and obviously with the advent of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, it is becoming more and more popular. Um, so if you, want to learn one language, I would suggest Python, um, and simply because of it's just um, a vast array of things that you can do with it. Um, yeah, brilliant. I think um, 
yeah, we see that again as as as, as a repeated message that uh, there's lots of languages that can add real value. Um, but if you're picking one, and um, certainly the, the fastest growth Python, really, really important. Um, Ash, um, I think uh, you knew this one was was coming. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'd love to hear you, you talk to the the wonders of SQL. Right. So for those of you who don't, don't know what SQL is, SQL is invented in the 1970s um, by IBM to query databases. And essentially what your core job will be is getting information out of a data source and visualizing it in its fundamental way. And I cannot tell you how many people I have met as analysts that will be terrible at SQL. So we have a four stage interview process at CityWire. So we, we have an initial inter, uh, sort of interview to see your soft skills. Then we give you a take home test if we think you're worth it. Um, and in that take home test, you have two tasks, which is get information from a database, visualize it. And you can tell the experience of someone by how they do that, because they, we put certain sort of gotchas within that within that SQL um, data set that you have to cleanse. And it is one of the main, main skills I would really concentrate on as an analyst. And if you do the course at uh, LSE, they, they, there is that um, there is a module that you'll do on it. Really work it. <laughs> Thank you, Ash. And um, we've got about 10 minutes to go. So we're going to start rattling through some, some things um, fairly quickly. Um, Elodie, was there anything um, Yeah, you wanted to add beyond um, Andrew and, and Ash's comments there on. I'm, I'm going to put in a vote for basic statistics, because I think if you don't have an understanding of statistics, um, then your analysis could be completely meaningless. So it's really, really important to know which are the right questions to ask, how to ask them, and whether what you see in the data is relevant um, and therefore useful to the business. So if you don't have a statistical background, don't be put off. There's nothing that you can't learn, but it is a really uh, fundamental understanding that you need to be a meaningful data scientist or analyst. And as a as a former maths teacher, Elodie, I'll, I'll second that and, and, and add my vote there as well. Um, thanks very much. Um, Getting into the business skills. So the technical skills are, are, you know, as we say, a sort of prerequisite. You're, you're, you're probably, you know, not, not being considered for the role without a, a number of fundamental technical skills. But now getting into some of the, the areas of differentiation where people are able to add, you know, real value from day one and, and accelerate in their career. Some of the business skills that, that we hear around it, such as structured thinking and decision making, trend analysis, forecasting, business casing. Um, these things coming up very consistently from 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 industry when we when we ask what's most valuable in in their team members um saying this is obviously very um key to to your role um bringing together data and and business at, at grant thornton would love love to hear hear your thoughts on on this business application area so yeah i think i mean ultimately for me there are two elements i think one of the core technical skills you flagged earlier on is storytelling and sort of data storytelling. So I think um, at the heart um, of any kind of convincing presentation or business case is an ability to convey a message clearly. Um, and I think the best way to do that um, effectively is by using kind of an array of data, visualizing it, and then effectively convincing your audience that you know what the core problem is, what's happened, why it's happened, and then guess in future when it might, might happen again. Um, but I think at the heart of that, rather than actually going into that core costs and business benefits, is the story you're trying to tell. And I think actually data analysis really helps you do that. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Um, in the interest of time, um, Mark, I'm going to keep keep moving through here, but a, a great quote you shared with us earlier around return on investment impact and, and persuasion skills and how important it is around actually understanding for the decision that's being made, where that investment is, what's the value of that investment, and how how data can be used and combined with uh, storytelling and others to, to persuade people to make the right decision. Um, when we talk about employability skills, again, these are a lot of the transferable skills, I think, that we've spoken about before, which put career changes in such good stead in order to make the transition, because they've 
had the experience of developing these skills in a professional environment, um, which can really differentiate them um, in the value that they can add to organizations, but also opportunity to develop that through, through gaining more experience, through collaborating with people with the team, by building your portfolio and, and, and working with others um, for, for people in earlier stages of their career as well. But again, the importance of these coming through so strongly from, from all the employers we talk to, as well as much of the, the conversation today. I'm going to skip through here as well. And then lastly, just wanted to, to articulate more on the personal skills that we talk about. That's sort of some of the things we mean here is around that goal setting and reflection, personal branding and networking, self-confidence and actualization. I think, you know, Mark was talking earlier around building that portfolio and, and it's not just projects, but things like blogging and, and, and that's all around building that personal brand so that uh, employers can really sort of pick you out from the crowd and really understand, okay, yeah, this is a person who's genuinely passionate about the field. Um, also understanding prior background experience and where you want to go and helping to articulate that, which can again, really, really um, support people on those career paths. So five minutes to go and wanting to jump ahead to, to introduce um, a bit more, more detail on the data analytics career accelerator, which um, you know is, is the partnership um, between LSE and fourth rev that brings us uh, here today. And uh, several of our panelists have, have been through uh, the program that we offer together and, um, and has supported them uh, successfully on their, their great career journeys to date. Um, and so just wanting to, to spend a, a brief amount of time introducing um, what is the data analytics career accelerator and so that is a six month program fully online where you're learning from both LSE experts as well as industry experts in a project based curriculum that's focused on the key goal of driving a career outcome that career outcome defined by you as 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 the learner working with your career coaches to uh, identify maybe that is a career switch into a data analytics role. Maybe that is accelerating in your current field by bringing data analytics skills and capabilities uh, into your broader skill set. Um, but really going through those fundamental technical business employability and personal growth skills that we know set people up for that longer term success. With our next intake beginning in a couple of weeks. Um, and so, you know, there'll be more information available at the end of this session um, with my colleague um, for, for further questions on this. But just to share a little bit more detail here, we build it out across four courses. Each course is based on project based learning where you are completing uh, activities that can be added to your portfolio, ending with a final practical employer project where you're collaborating with. with with other team members and working with a, a live employer partner on a live project um, to really get that meaningful experience of completing data analytics projects and getting feedback from, from employers. Throughout, you're working with industry experts facilitating the course and getting ongoing one-to-one -one executive career coaching, which is really helping you understand where you're at, where you wanna go and, and what are the best next steps in order to set you up for achieving those career outcomes. The, the technical curriculum covering an, uh, uh, all of the areas that have been spoken about um, really clearly today, beginning with um, SQL and, and Tableau for data visualization, moving into Python, and also bringing in Python and R in, in course three, and all framed through applied business projects. How are you actually utilizing these technical skills to create real value within organizations and the whole program being built and designed um, through that lens uh, with that principle front and center around business application, setting people up for, for that career success. We've got many, many stories, over 100 amazing career outcomes that have come from from the program since uh, the first cohort began at the beginning of, of last year. Um, been really tremendous to see some of them. Wonderful stories, including a number on the panel here today. Particularly love this story uh, around Ted, who's been delivering value um, through conflict zones in Africa, working the Red Cross, bringing his, his data skills and analysis skills, really highlighting its, its huge applicability across a whole wide range of, of industries. Um, we've heard a little bit about LED here and, in, and sadly running out of time to hear it in a bit more depth, but um, congratulations again on, on starting that new role um, today. 
the 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 last thing I wanted to share before um, I do hand over to my my colleague um, Ken's is we um, thank you to everyone who's who's stayed with us to this point. Um, there is going to be a free coaching workshop with the wonderful fourth rev LSE career coaches that are experts in setting people up for success in data analytics fields as well as many others uh, held on Wednesday the 9th of August and we'll be um, sharing a link with you all in order to sign up it's exclusive to those that have attended this webinar um, and that will be coming through in uh, correspondence from us so please look out for that in your inbox. And so um, from here, um, there have been a number of questions come through. Apologies, I haven't been able to, to, to find enough time to answer them with the panel, but we will be taking them on board and we will be getting in touch with, with everyone who's attended the webinar following this and, and we'll try and answer some of those questions there as well. So keep an eye in your inbox for information about access to coaching um, and also really calling out exclusive again to people that have attended this webinar there is an exclusive offer of a discount for our upcoming intake that is going to be um, available to you for the next 72 hours so that is going to be sent through uh, if you want to take advantage of that then um, please respond as uh, quickly as you possibly can Otherwise, uh, we are on the hour, so it's just left to me to say thank you very much to all of our panellists uh, for all of your contributions. Uh, I've learned so much today, and I, I'm sure everyone in attendance has as well. So thank you very, very much for giving up your valuable time and sharing your uh, fascinating stories. Um, and then thank you to everyone in attendance uh, for engaging and, and thinking about your future, your, your potential career in data. Um, we're so passionate about it and we want to see many, many more people go down that path. So thank you.